When starting on Insane Population in Louisville, I really didn't expect to have a character make it over 100 days, or the span of the series as a whole, or the support. I mean, Louisville is touted as a death sentence, and cranking it up to the max seemed like a good way to generate short stories in varying circumstances, not something I could actually survive and thrive in. So take a seat, because I don't think you'll ever see the streets of Louisville this clear again. Spawning in, I searched the building for any sheets to put on the windows or a weapon to protect myself, but nothing. All I found was a hiking bag, and while incredibly useful, it would do nothing if a group detected me. With no other choice, I made my way to a nearby house and checked the front door. I would need to kill to get in. Once inside, I immediately filled my pack with anything of value, coming away with food, curtains, a weapon, a leather jacket for protection, and a sick hat. Laden, I experienced my poor fitness firsthand, and already knew staying on top of my exhaustion would be a tedious but necessary endeavour. After returning home and unloading my loot, I found my location and investigated the nearby area. There wasn't anything stand out close by, but the fenced houses across the street afforded more protection than the standalone one I found myself in. I'll admit, it wasn't great, but it would serve. Now tired, I turned in for the day. I awoke after only a few hours of sleep due to my wakeful and night owl traits. Seizing the time afforded to me, I immediately started clearing any nearby zombies. Without a weapon, it was imperative I only drew in a couple at most. I got lucky and found a kitchen knife on one of the corpses, which I promptly used. Following the banging noise, I went upstairs and found the source. The subsequent fight alerted those nearby. And the threat of being overwhelmed and exhausted forced me to retreat. Rested. I skirted around the building and cleared the surrounding area before heading inside. I found bourbon, curtains, a radio, and a weapon, making me far more capable in a fight. When breaking into another home, I narrowly escaped an injury, but I quickly cleared it in the backyard of its inhabitants. I left with another full backpack, but the most valuable item was a saw. If I could find a hammer, I could finally engage with the carpentry mechanics. The next house had its gate broken down, but its intact windows made it a better choice for a base than its neighbour. Continuing my momentum, I made my way one house further and scored some more bourbon before turning back. The remainder of my day was spent locking down my home, transferring items from across the street, and heading to bed. I welcomed the next day by exercising choosing burpees as they improve both fitness and strength. With the meager gains, this would be a long process. After clearing off the blood and dirt of the previous day, I returned to my old base, gathered what was left and crossed the street. I got caught out. Using my remaining energy, I looped them around the house and made my way back inside. Thankfully, I was only followed by one. But the threat of an unknown number breaking through a window caused me to leave. After catching my breath, I finally deposited everything and set to work on the group I had lost. One zombie gave me a bulletproof vest, but the rest showed me how fruitless fighting was. Ignoring the nearby horde, I continued ransacking my neighbor's properties. Fearing the water cutting off, I filled all my vessels before heading back out to burn the last of my energy. With it too early to sleep, I spent the rest of the day reading the carpentry skill book. As I read, some zombies nearby were bashing down a door. Each bang hammered in the idea that if I stayed here, it wouldn't be a single day I left my base and felt safe. 
I needed a better place to call home. Somewhere my efforts would permanently translate into my survival. It took a while, with many good looking candidates, but none came close to what I found. A place with unbreachable walls, one entrance, 24 multi-story houses, and a large courtyard. I knew this was the place. Here, I would either thrive or die. Preparing for the journey the next day, I crafted a couple molotovs, gathered my rare finds, and packed enough food and water to last the trek. Now extremely tired, I rested, eagerly anticipating the next day. My plan was simple. If I managed to make it there, I would burn the Zeds to the ground and create a permanent den in the local population. Then, sneak into the compound and secure a house. Along my walk, I spotted a fire department ute and raced ahead. Inside, I found one of my favourite weapons. Besides that, the monotony of abandoned homes, hordes, and vain attempts to survive set in. As soon as I arrived, I tried to draw in as many as possible and pull them further down the road. Throwing my Molotov, I hadn't thought about the rain as the flames struggled to take hold. But it did. And so did the townhouses. After looping the buildings, I dispatched what remained and returned to the entranceway. My next step was to sneak into a house and use it as a stepping stone to secure the compound. It didn't work out. With my plan out the window, I would instead gather what I could from inside and use my second molly to clear them. If I succeeded, I would find myself in a relatively safe house and have most of the work around the compound done. At the entranceway, I circled the horde I had gathered with those outside, clumping them together, and walked them down the street. Waiting for them to burn to death or stretching into the night, so after igniting them all and pulling them away from the road, I gave them the slip and repeated my attempt to sneak in. The bottom floor was clear of the dead, but I found one in the bathroom. That was a mistake. The noise drew the attention of zombies nearby. Tension I really didn't need. Thankfully, I had to fight only three. But as I was unsure if any more had found their way in, I chose a house further down the road to settle in. This time when I opened the door to a zombie in the bathroom, I made sure to pull it outside before killing it. Just like my old home, rhythmic banging permeated every moment, continuing as I added sheets to the windows, managed my needs, and went to sleep. I awoke to a bang. Tonight would be a restless night. Afraid of fighting in the dark, I read the mechanic skill book till it was light outside. Fuck. That was power and water cutting out. Unloading what I brought to the compound, I grabbed my axe and set to work. I stomped to preserve my axe's durability, but in groups where time was critical, I brought it down instead. The first thing on my agenda was to close off the entranceway. Without any cars or place furniture across its width. Zombies could bust it down and make their way inside, but it would deter them, give me more time to react. Looking for more furniture, I took it as an opportunity to clear and loot some more homes, though I usually tried to steal it from under their tenants' noses. After considerable effort and many risks, My magnum opus was complete. For the remainder of my day, I began tackling metalworking before turning in. I awoke to many near my defences and quickly set off to deal with them. God, I love the axe. After rebuilding my wall and exercising, it was time to clear the compound. I planned to sweep the outer road, tackle the courtyard, and then create noise to lure them out of the buildings. Chipping away at a group on the corner, I fell victim to the isometric perspective. 
it was time to run. Unwilling to bring them down the road, I took a risk and cut through the unseen courtyard to lose them. With no noise from the door or guests through the window, I left to tackle the now split group. The spat, I stole a look into the courtyard and continued to push west along the northern face of the compound, making sure to take frequent breaks. Eventually, my axe's condition reached critical levels, so I swapped it for the pipe wrench. It was far less effective, but it got the job done. Overheating from the hard labor, I cut down on all clothing that didn't offer protection and kept pushing. The road was clear, the day was almost over, and I was blood soaked. I finished off metalworking from the previous night and welcomed the next day. With the northern face mostly cleared, it wouldn't be long until I had secured the compound. Nope, 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 unequivocally nope. If it spotted me, I was dead. Even if it didn't, it could still pull dozens of zombies into my defenses and home and undo everything. Sitting down to watch the entranceway, I had gone unspotted, but it still brought them into a collision course with my wall. The silence that fell over Louisville ushered my way down the stairs. One had broken in, but fighting inside was unwise, so I moved the battle outside. After rebuilding my defenses from disparate furniture, I tackled the adjoining houses to end the banger. Came away with silence and something far greater. Right before falling asleep, I noticed a difference in my weight. Like the bloodbath outside, I was making incremental progress. After washing off the blood from the previous day, I restored my wall, exercised, and left to move in the opposite direction around the compound. I checked a van along the way for its key, but was unlucky. There was a chance I could find it in a container nearby, but I had more than likely burned it with my earlier stun. My killing spree continued, as I did the same for two vehicles involved in an accident, and the two cars in the northwest corner. Reaching the northern side, I'd circumnavigated the compound and achieved the first part of my plan. My arrival at the entranceway was met by the breaking down of my defenses, but I had my men. With the exterior cleared, it was time to move on to the courtyard. There were far fewer than I expected. It wasn't long until I began yelling to draw the remainder out of the houses. I was quickly overwhelmed, but as the final step of my plan, continued to fight and chip away at them. The compound almost secure, and the entrance defenses intact, I could feel safe in the street outside my home for the first time. Now reading electrical, I tried to think of the countless items I still needed to secure my future. But I slept soundly, knowing I had taken the first step. It was time to kill the few zombies still trying to reach the courtyard. One of them. I failed to open the window and couldn't open the door, so I cut through the neighboring house. Inside it, I found a hammer. This would change things. I could now dismantle furniture to get their resources and engage with the carpentry mechanics of the game. Hi, I'm Alex, and Welcome to Woodcraft. Today we'll be making a survivalist necessity, a bench so you can rest those weary legs. For this, you'll need your bench, some nails, some legs, and a hammer. There's been some budget cuts. I don't know if you can see that, but that's progress.
<laughs> wow. Comfy. I continued silencing any noise, installed some leather gloves, electronics I could dismantle, and a radio. Using the planks and nails from dismantling furniture, I began barricading the windows of my base. Each carpentry level afforded me a flat 10% increase in resource gains, but it was still a slow process as I found myself with an excess of planks and a desperate need for nails. Wanting a faster solution, I sat down and searched for any nearby sources. The Northwest was a hardware store. Here I could find nails and many other items and materials I could use, like a sledgehammer for breaking down walls, propane for repairing cars, materials to fix tools, or seeds for farming. Essentially, if I successfully looted the store, I would be set. My next option was to the northeast, a far more bare bones solution that might have nails, but the containers were far more accessible than if they were in a building. As you can guess, I prepared for the hardware store. In preparation, I stole the emergency broadcast frequency from a car, tuned in and listened for the weather and helicopters. With seeds on the horizon, I welcomed in the next day by reading the farming skill book. I immediately crafted a Molotov, dropped my tools and set off. I was once again walking through the streets of a dead city. As I approached the city centre, the size of the groups quickly went from scary to terrifying, pushing my resolve and that of my PCs. Now at the hardware store, I did my best to pull the Zeds away and began the arduous task of burning them to the ground. Isn't it beautiful? Having used my only molly, I chained the dwindling fireball into those up the street. The flames were close to the buildings, but it was still under control as I worked away on the second horde. I was wrong. The adjacent building was alight. I tried to pull the flaming zombies out of the building to slow the fire, but it was useless. The hardware store could catch a light, so my best time to loot it was now. But if I went in there, there was no guarantee I would make it out. All I could do was lead my group in circles, as the adjacent store also caught fire. Hungry, I headed back down the road to the grocery store. It was also on fire. I managed to grab some snacks, but the building was now a write-off. With food in my belly, I returned to the hardware store. It was also on fire. Watching my aspirations burn, I could do nothing, as I needed those following me to die first. With the horde gone and the stragglers cleared, I tried to dash in and grab anything. Opting for a safer tactic, I drew out those at the entrance before sneaking in and grabbing a welding mask. Kept trying, but never seemed to get another opportunity. It wasn't long until I was overwhelmed and forced to let them and the store burn into the night. Taking vitamins, I fought off tiredness at every step. It was 2am before their groans ceased. I slipped into a house and hoped the day's yelling had cleared it. I couldn't see, but one was up here with me. Now in the bedroom, the moonlight confirmed it was clear, so I chanced sleeping. Making my way across the street, I went into the store. It was all gone. If 
for all my efforts and everything I had wanted, all I had was a welding mask to show for it. I had failed miserably. Determined to find something of value, I broke into the patrol car outside and came away with a walkie-talkie and shovel. So the last day of tents and exhausting work and the destruction of two valuable stores was worth it. The fog set the tone for the day as I returned home in a blank haze. Even the walkie-talkie couldn't tune into the one frequency I cared about. Instead of turning right toward home, I went straight. My aim was the construction site. I would at least find nails. On the bottom floor, I scored some tools. Barely any nails. And two garbage bags for a water collector. I'm happy with my haul, I ran up the one set of stairs to the second floor with them hot on my heels. There was nothing. Empty handed, I now had to pass through the hoard I had ditched. Pulling what I could out, I went in. I was lucky to have only come away with a minor injury, but it being my foot drastically slowed me. Entering the compound through the front and unable to fight with a group following would undo all my progress, so instead I would jump the fence. All I needed was a house with the front door open. I was safe, and after reblocking the entrance, I'd escaped with my life, but failed in every other way. I donned the faceplate of shame and questioned what the rest of my life would look like. I had failed, but was still in a strong position behind my barricade. With the power and water cut off, I needed to make renewable sources of food and water to survive into the future. I'd been looking outwards for my salvation but overlooked what lay at my doorstep, or more accurately, the 23 other doorsteps within the compound. Each house was brimming with food, water, and supplies, all ripe for the picking. So I set off. Breaking the compound into quadrants, I tackled the eastern face and took anything of remote value. By grabbing everything and visiting every home, I am to confidently say there were no zombies or unaccounted loot left in the houses. Despite the indiscriminate ransacking, I had my eye out for a couple of items. I was still short on the next carpentry volume, and hoped to find more weapons. After clearing four homes, I marked off the burnt down buildings from earlier, finished reading the farming skill book, and welcomed the next day. Under the dark of night, I quickly wrapped up the remainder of the eastern homes. I was confident they were clear, but I snuck around just in case. With my first quadrant done, I sat and listened for any incoming helicopters. But nothing. It was time to move on to the northern homes. At this point, all perishable food had rotted and the food left on the countertops of the first home was no exception, but the containers remained useful as they could store water. The house continued to set a strong precedent as I found a hand torch, a magazine to operate generators, and some weapons. Continued working away on the houses and found valuable but ordinary items. was a monotonous task with some highlights. What the fuck? But well worth it. Having hauled large amounts of weight all day, I started to run out of energy, but I kept pushing into the last two homes. I returned from almost finishing the northern face to a problem. All my containers were full. As a temporary solution, I dumped my empty water vessels into a corner and called it a day. Rather than cautiously moving in the dark, my hand torch let me power through the last northern home and start on the western buildings. 
Having run out of storage, I began dumping items in large piles on the floor for me to sort later. Taking a break, I tried to forage for items on my way back, but found little. And the last time, I came away with an invaluable score. If I read the magazines, I could work on the various cars around the compound and grind my mechanic skill on them. At level 2 mechanics and electrical 1, you can hotwire cars, letting you drive them without keys. For now, it was useless, but not in the future. Under torchlight, I wrapped up the western face and cracked on with the southern homes. In the fourth, I found the carpentry book I was looking for and another baseball bat. After stripping the last two, I could confidently say the compound was free of the undead. I was safe, but I would need to saw all of this. For reading material storage, I'd steal my neighbor's bookshelves and expand my kitchen cabinetry for the rest. Almost on cue, a zombie bashing on my wall interrupted me before I could start. I was unstoppable. Regardless, it was only a matter of time until my home would be clean and sheep. Taking advantage of another early start, I stole a white bookshelf and placed it in my living room. I could finally dent the pile. With the shelves quickly filled, I began searching for a matching set to finish the job. After a quick rest, I added some books to the shelf and remembered the water vessels I had placed in the corner. Rather than doing nothing inside, they could sit on the grass at the back and capture rainwater. I need to boil it to drink it, but I could still wash clothes or water plants with the tainted water. Not knowing what qualified, I placed just about anything onto the lawn and hoped it would work. Once back inside, I loaded the shelves and set up even more storage solutions. I filled the cardboard boxes with an assortment of books, magazines, discs and VHS tapes began expanding the kitchen cabinetry to accommodate the mountain of items still left on my floor. I hit level 2 carpentry, meaning I'd no longer have a multiplier on experience gained, but as I had found the second volume on my looting spree, I read into the night, the morning, and through the emergency broadcast frequency to get it for the next two. Checking my progress on my negative traits, my lean eating strategy was paying off. I had reached 87 kilos. The same could not be said for my fitness or strength, as I was still far from the next level, let alone removing my negative modifiers. I continued removing the cabinetry from my neighbours and moved it into my kitchen, letting me store food from the floor and consolidating it from my other containers. Before heading to bed, I designated the bathroom cabinet for medical and cosmetic supplies and turned in. I continued the following day, expanding my kitchen, trying to move my couch, adding more shelving, and filling each container with one item group. These included literature, water, electronics, and weapons. My kitchen was finally clean, and I could afford to add more homey touches. Needing a break, I began foraging. Failing to find anything inside the courtyard, I searched along the road. I'd forgotten about the two locked cars in the northwest corner. The Cerise was in good condition, so I broke into it and looked for keys. I was also unlucky when checking the Valulin, but I didn't need keys. With those magazines I found and a little experience grinding, I could hotwire them. Having a car would significantly increase my range for loot runs, and after a mysterious fire wiped out the nearest hardware store, I needed it. I was looking outwards again, but from a stronger position. With a shot at redemption, I was going for it. All it would take is a grind. Using a wrench and a screwdriver, I uninstalled and reinstalled the parts on the two crashed cars at the back of the compound. Each attempt could damage the car part and eventually break them, but as they were already damaged, I didn't care. Over time, the cars became unrecognisable, so I broke each piece and left them strewn about. The repetitive but tiresome work wore away and I found myself overheating. I usually avoid removing armour, but I was safe behind my walls. Needing a place to rest, I replaced my couch with a single seater and returned to my skill grind. It was almost there. Running out of parts to work on, I sacrificed another car, forgetting that I could only work on standard and performance cars, not commercial ones. 
You get a hot wire, I skipped exercising and scrounged the remaining experience on the few parts still left on the two cars. When hot wiring cars, every failure can set off an alarm. If the radius was large enough, it could pull the undead inside, but the reward was too great not to try. The cautious approach would be to hotwire one car, but it was free real estate. With a small amount of gas in the tank, I floored it down the side street to the entrance. Like every inch of progress in Louisville, a group of zombies came to celebrate. I broke into the last usable car in the compound and picked up a high quality walkie talkie from inside. Without gas, the step van wasn't worth hot wiring, so I left it in favour of bringing the gassed up Cerise to the entranceway. I was once again ready for another run for the items necessary to secure my future. But with limited hardware stores, I couldn't afford to fail again. Getting deeper into the city meant more zombies, so I chose to look further away for my salvation. The closest nearby was on the outskirts, a distance greater than I had ever travelled across Louisville. But if I could surmount it, I could secure my future. I spent the remainder of the day locking down my base. The walkie-talkie I'd picked up had the emergency broadcast frequency, so I tuned in and went to work. No furniture was safe as I dismantled them for planks and nails, or use them in another barricade. Waking in the early hours, I gathered supplies, stocked my cerise with food and water, and opened my barricade. Today would be a long day. I found myself retracing the steps I had made to get here. Passing all the landmarks reminded me of the early struggles I had overcome. Despite the nostalgia, it was a slow process traversing the crowded streets with the Sunday driver trap. Eventually, I was in uncharted territory. It felt more feral out here. Along one of the stretches of road, I found myself beset by walls on one side and trees on the other, forcing me to weave between the groups occupying the road. It was close. But I prevailed. Arriving at the store, I gathered what I could, clustered the undead, and led them to the field. Losing the store wasn't an option, so I kept them isolated to the grass and worked away at the horde. Unlike other times, I avoided yelling to keep those near the store entrance to a minimum. Clearing the area wasn't necessary. I just needed access to the store. Once the horde was small enough, I finished the remainder and approached. They were close by, but I would at least get one run in. Inside I found the items to repair tools, fishing equipment, seeds, crowbars, screws, nails, metal, and a wood axe. Wanting to be able to fight, I avoided overloading myself and headed back to the car, deposited everything, made my way back inside. Emboldened by the lack of zombies, I began stripping the store. With the boot full, I resorted to using the seats to store items. For my last run, I cleaned out what was left, used what water I could, and prepared to leave. Oh shit. Retracing my steps was a mistake. The noise of the car passing through had filled the already cramped street. It was impossible to traverse without hitting something along the way. 
but with the hood in good condition, it wouldn't affect the engine. For now. With the entire street infested, I took the first way out I spotted. It's a little lost, but with a general bearing, it wasn't long until I returned to familiar streets. I had made it home. Before the undead could catch up, I brought the boot close to the entrance and prepared to fight. Unsure of how many were coming, I sealed much of my barricade to bottleneck them. The dead had arrived. I left most of the items in the car in favour of setting up gardening storage and using my newly acquired wood axe to chop down some trees. I sawed the felled logs into planks and combined them with the numerous boxes of nails to finish securing the entranceway. and my house. After a long and successful day, it was time to sleep. Today would be the day I secured my future. With the items looted from the hardware store, I now build a garden, grind my carpentry skill to make water collectors, and improve the defenses of my base. I eagerly listened to the weather forecast. If it was going to rain, I could sow my seeds the day before and drastically save on water. With no such luck, I moved the garden down on my priority list and instead worked on the other issues around my base. I built containers to store my newfound loot, constructed a floor outside my second story window for water collectors, to eventually plumbed them to my sink. Though, it was off scent. I also expanded my exterior storage to include farming equipment and wood waste. Soon I would have food and water sorted, my future would be secured. Another helicopter. The compound was clear, my defense is strong, but it could still come crashing down around me if it pulled too many into my wall. Unfortunately for me, the fog obscured everything. Once again, despite my best efforts, my future remained uncertain. With the fog clear and my defenses intact, I had survived another helicopter event. It was time to use the various items from my successful hardware store run to make meaningful progress on my long-term food and water needs. With those sorted, the scores of undead would be the only thing stopping me from conquering the insanely infested streets of Louisville. Even though my wall was intact, they were too close to the entranceway for comfort. For insane population, I expected more. With the entrance clear, I could empty my car from yesterday's raid and use the items I had looted. I began by digging furrows. I was holding off on planting seeds for rain, but it gave structure to the massive garden I intended to build in the section. Before bed, I read another skill book and checked my progress on my removable traits. I had lost overweight. Presenting a problem. I needed to consume even more of my limited food to prevent becoming underweight. Time had worn away overnight. I had survived 21 days in this hellscape and reflected it. With the next rainfall unknown, going for rain collector barrels was my top priority. The barrels require level 4 carpentry, planks and garbage bags, none of which I had, but I could get two within my walls. I chopped down trees, sawed logs, built walls at the entrance and listen to the weather for rain. But still nothing. Running out of things to construct, I began encircling my garden with fences. It wasn't a case of functionality, but necessity, as I was still a far cry from level 4. After measuring more than I'm willing to admit, I cracked on with the trees for the upper half and noticed the state of my pants. 
With water cut off, I resorted to washing across the various plumb fixtures in a neighbouring house. Using the last of my energy, I sawed all the logs I could and succumbed to the arduous labour of the day. After my morning exercise and re-equipping my gear, I had an idea. You can dual wield fanny packs? I am a genius. I filled my new fanny pack with pills and got back to grinding. Grabbing some more nails, I got straight back to it. I got it. I now had the level and planks to construct rain collector barrels, but not garbage bags. With only a couple found throughout my life, I need to leave the compound to raid nearby dumpsters and garbage cans. After a quick search, I located the nearest and hatched a plan. Insulated clothing and weight can slow you down and decrease your endurance. Therefore, if I cut all my clothes and ditch my tools, I could run around Louisville nearly naked, cover a greater distance faster. So here I was. Needing something to eat, I took the opportunity to raid the Zippy Mart. The following dead quickly broke in, and I found myself using the shells to delay them while I took my pick of the snacks. My next stop was the bins outside the Finnegan Research Group building. My looting was contested once again, but my superior speed let me lose them by cutting them through the burnt townhouses. I could now have my pick of the garbage. Having cleared my scouted area, I kept pushing east. It wasn't long before I found another dumpster to dive into. With enough garbage bags for four collectors, I was ready to return home. But the potential of finding more construction supplies was too alluring. I grabbed what I could before the dead caught up and pulled them far away to repeat the process. This accrued and clustered the undead together and I found myself with a large ward following. Rather than fighting or letting them pursue me back home, I leapt into a scrapyard and hoped the group would fail to path to me or the time afforded would let me hotwire the dart so I could escape. It was out of gas. I tried to check the other vehicles, but needed to get closer to know if they had any. There was a chance the chop shop building would have some, but the growing precariousness of the situation meant it was time to head home. For two propane tanks, maybe fighting wouldn't be so bad. Without armor, mistake meant death. Yet I was well versed in dancing with large groups. With the area clear, I confirmed each vehicle was out of gas. Nothing, nothing. Enough. I transferred everything to the step van, looted what I could from the chop shop, hot wired it, and set off. I placed the tanks on the floor, not in the boot. With the entrance block, the undead needed to break through and move away before I could escape. In the process, I could loot the distillery van and grab the propane tanks. Pulling the horde away and clustering them, it only took one attempt to get the bourbon, but a few for the propane tanks. Heavily encumbered, I moved as fast as I could back to the van. It was time to escape. With night approaching, I made a beeline for the base. Pulling up out the front, I went inside and donned my armor for the upcoming fight. My previous work had paid off, as only a couple had contested my arrival. Wrapping up my adventure, 
pulled the van behind my barricade, killed any stragglers, rearranged my cars, and restored my defences. I could finally build rain collector barrels. I was stuck up here. Unable to force my way in, I had to think outside the box to gain entry. After that ordeal and a long day, I slept easily into the morning of the 24th day. I wrapped up the water collectors on the balcony and plumbed them into my sink. Unlike the tainted water outside, this would produce clean and drinkable water instead. Using the last of my garbage bags, I built a collector by the garden and listened to the weather forecast. It's going to rain tonight. I scrounged what gas I could from the compound and began sowing seeds. Finishing cabbages and broccoli, I ran out of furrows for the other seeds, forcing me to expand them to encompass the whole section. Soon potatoes, radishes and strawberries would join the other vegetables and form the bulk of my diet once they were harvested. With my future bright, I cut away the wear of time, worked on myself, and slept. It was a prosperous night. The rain failed to fill my containers, but it watered my vegetables and would be enough to tide me over. I used the tainted water outside to wash my clothes, checked the weather forecast to no avail, and took my first sip of clean and renewable water from my sink. The rest of the day was admin work. I would sorted most containers, but some were weirdly designated or unorganized. It took a while, but eventually, everything had its place. With the final touch of my base completed, it was time to sleep. With water sorted, my next issue was food. I was going to have far too much. There was no way I could eat the upcoming harvest before it rotted. I needed a way to freeze food. The only solution was to restore power to the compound and fridges within it. But with the Nox grid and a blackout, I would need a generator and fuel to run it. For fuel, the best source is gas stations, but as the gas pumps needed to be powered to run, the generator had to come first. Generators can spawn in sheds, but the most surefire way would be to hit a self-storage lot, as each unit has a chance to have one inside. My plan was simple. Burn away the nearby zombies in the junkyard with bourbon from the distillery van, use the repaired axe to break down the unit's garage doors, secure a generator, and be home before dark. I had arrived. I repeated the same strategy as the second hardware store, clustering them together, leading them away, and moving in circles to the following were Ash. To clear the remaining Zeds, I could use my spear Molotov, but fighting the small groups left in my way would take less time. My entrance into the Eustorit lot was contested, the axe on a zombie confirmed the fireless approach was the right choice. Progressing deeper, I raided dumpsters and checked the units. There were a few in here, but not enough to slow me down. I was tired too quickly. The rest of my day would be breaking down doors with an axe, and exhaustion would leave me vulnerable. After shedding some armor to help with the endurance loss, I fought to the far corner of the lock. As I was far away from the entrance, I could make noise and not worry about those outside coming for me. Even though I was relatively safe, the dead so close left me uncomfortable. The utility shed netted me little, and so did the first unit. Exhausted. 
ate some food and rested before moving on to the next one. There was a new threat. The units themselves. Thankfully, the noise alerted those trapped inside and began banging on the doors, giving away their position. The sixth unit contained my first big score. A propane torch. With it, I was now capable of doing metalworking and repairing cars. Sticking to the far side of the lot, I kept up my momentum, with the only interruption being rest or stragglers. After hitting a stopped unit, my encumbrance became an issue, so I dumped my items close to the entrance and cracked on. I found a generator. With the sun setting, it was time to go. I picked up the gen and the pile of items I had created and returned them to the step van. Encumbrance adversely affected my ability to fight, and with more coming, I would soon run out of energy. So I shed the weight, fought, and raced to escape. If there were any by my entrance, the weight could kill me, so I dumped what I could into the passenger seat. Oh, shit. I fought back the undead and tiredness until I was finally safe. Bloodied and bruised, I stole gas from the cerise and connected the generator. The compound had power once again. I couldn't understand why my power consumption didn't add up, so after cleaning myself, I disconnected the fridge nearby to fix it. It helped less than it should have. Confused, I turned off the generator to conserve my limited gas and left it as a problem for another day. It was time to get gas. I disconnected my generator, grabbed all my gas vessels, emptied the van, crafted more molotovs, and set off. My target was the gas station by the Eustorit lot. There were other candidates nearby, but if I wiped out even more zombies in the area, I'd be making a concerted effort to get the zombie population under control there. Even with the extermination yesterday, the number of zombies was frightening, but I kept my cool. Once I was down to stragglers, I finished what was left and began manually clearing the gas station. The fire axe left a strong impression, so I found myself inside the store looting soon after. I found what I was hoping for. Even more gas cans I could fill once the generator was set up. With the pumps clear and everything swept, I brought the van down. I was going to need another Molotov. Rather than only burning the group that had found me, I moved further down the street to clear the neighboring shops. I was getting better. I couldn't access the gun store without a sledgehammer, so I grabbed what I could and returned to my van to connect the generator. The noise of the gen or lights of the store could pull them in, so I worked quickly to fill as many gas cans or vessels as possible. I also remembered to top up my vehicle before disconnecting the gen and heading home under darkness. Fighting in the dark was far too risky, but the headlights created the perfect kill zone for those drawn to the noise. Hidden behind my wall once again, I could restore power and do my best to tackle the 26 lights increasing my fuel consumption. Generators operate within a range, so I knew roughly where to look. I got 7 on my first run, and another 7 on the second. I killed all the lights I wanted to narrow my hunt and tracked down the rest. 
I'd gotten them all. Doing the math on how long my generator would run, a fuel capacity of 12.5 litres and a usage of 0.19 litres an hour, and approximately three days of power. Not sure if that was right, but once I harvested my crops, I'd still have plenty of gas to keep my refrigerators running. With the past days with a blood caked on, I reflected on my current trajectory. Rather than continuing to risk life and limb beyond my walls, I would turn inwards again. This time I would focus on myself rather than the structures and loot in the compound. For the remainder of the day, I performed burpees, rested, and repeated those steps. I kept pushing. Even when exercise fatigue left my body aching, I kept going. Once I could no longer exercise due to too much pain, I finished carpentry, cleaned the broken glass around the compound, and began running. Sprinting into what was a fast pace, crawled to a walk. With the pain too great to sleep, I pumped my body with painkillers and welcomed the next day. But I kept exercising, resting, and running. I was getting tired of heading inside, so I nabbed a chair, claimed my first level, and went right back to it. It was ceaseless. Hello, 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 and hello. You're watching Alex's Fitness Club, and today we have a special workout routine brought to us by Matthew Aguilar. This one relies on three simple techniques anyone can do anywhere. First off, we have burpees. If you've ever had a shit PE lesson, this one you'll know. You go down into a push-up position, do a push-up, get back up to your feet, and jump. Super simple. For the second, we have running, an innate skill in every Project Zomboid player. Thirdly, you want to find something to hold as we have strafing. Feel it in your glutes, then you're doing it right. You're now ready to go through one of Matthew's workout sessions. Let's take a look at the 25th of August. We're going to want to start off with 50 minutes of strafing, followed by 20 minutes of sprinting, and then 50 more minutes of strafing, 20 more sprinting, and then burpees for the rest of the... Is this right? Make sure to do burpees in your room while a helicopter flies overhead. Hope that the undead won't kill you. And repeat for the foreseeable future. Eventually, you'll have done so many burpees that you can no longer feel pain. You can do them for eight days straight. I don't think that's right. Severely depressed, bored, and mentally broken, I'd gained another level. I spent the morning regaining my sanity by reading books and listening to the radio whilst eating, though muscle memory took over towards the end. As I prepared to end my ceaseless exercise grind, I restored power to the compound, re-equipped my armor and gear, gussied up, and thought of my next step as I strafed in the bedroom. I could secure cold storage for my growing plants, the means to bust down walls and the munitions I could get with it, or even more skill grinding materials. All I knew was I needed to head out there, anything to break the monotony. Risking life and limb was worth it if I kept my sanity. It was time to leave. The impending harvest would overfill my lone fridge's freezer, and as more would be inefficient, my only choice was to grab a chest freezer. After that was connected, I'd have my basic needs met, and I could begin working on my other short-term goals. Arriving at the station, I used the horn to lure them in from the surrounding area before clustering them and pulling them away. The rain would dampen the spread of the flames, but the sheer quantity of the undead would fan them. Leading them in circles, I was oddly calm, the situation didn't require skill, only time and patience. Eventually, the horde began to thin until only a fraction remained. It had been days since I last fought the dead, and it showed. 
but my greater strength and axe carried me into the gas station. With the dead wiped out, I took my time and grabbed snacks before loading up the chest freezer and heading home. Once the compound was secure, I installed the chest freezer and finally harvested my radishes. That is a lot of experience. The harvest was bountiful, but not enough to stop my fridge's freezer, so I disconnected the chest, replanted the radishes, and made a token effort to clean up the overgrown garden. Speaking of cleanup, I put days of effort into storage solutions and still found myself with piles stacked high, so I spent the remainder of my day trying to get furniture before heading to bed. With another day came aging. The once unfamiliar face that greeted me was now a welcome sight of survival. For now, it could remain, as there was work to do. Soon my other vegetables would be ready to harvest, and I needed a multiplier and experience for the two upcoming farming levels. With the book read, my potatoes not seed bearing, I continued my attempt to gather furniture, and finally succeeded with another white bookshelf. I forgot to check for helicopters. Its proximity meant a run to my base could draw its attention, so I hid away and passed the time the best way I knew how. As the helicopter's noise grew fainter, I risked returning across the courtyard to assess the damage. There was a hole in my wall. The undead had broken through. They could have retreated afterwards, but I needed to be on high alert for the time being. With the entrance secure, those lurking outside posed a substantial threat, but not one I could afford to deal with in the dark. Stuck inside and alert from my midday nap, I sorted my books into two groups and removed their duplicates. Still unable to sleep, I worked on my living room, removing redundant furniture and working on the layout. With it looking cleaner, I checked on my plants. All my cabbages had died beneath the overgrowth. In the grand scheme, was inconsequential, but as I had sowed all my cabbage seeds, I needed to find another packet to grow them again. Besides a bang on my wall, the rest of the day was slow as I completed monotonous tasks and fought to stay awake. The overgrown section had cost me my cabbages. It would not happen again. I spent my entire morning ripping out grass and weeds and chopping down the bushes and saplings that had begun to grow. Progress. Consuming the first homegrown veggies, I mentally prepped for my next task. Gathering VHS tapes for skill grinding, and a quick stop to the neighbouring liquor store for more Molotov materials. The familiar streets with sizeable groups quickly broke into the uncharted city. It was bad this close to the CBD. Oh Jesus. So, so bad. Outside the store, I almost shied away from using the horn, but I could make an impact here. I was going to burn them all. The horn pulled in far more than I could have imagined, and I quickly found myself surrounded. Escaping the clutches, I took the opportunity to throw the Molotov and weave through the disparate groups to cluster them. Countless. With the Zeds clustered together, the tension broke and I could slowly walk whilst the following horde snuffed itself out. Finishing the remainder, I took the opportunity to rummage through the corpses amongst the ashes. Firex had survived my purge. It was time to loot the stores. Ideally, I bring the van out the front, but the dead so close meant it would require another Molotov and too much of the remaining daylight. So after pulling those closest, I cleared out the VHS and liquor stores and grabbed a healthy portion of the loot. With the tapes as light as they were, I'd only need one more run for the remaining shelves and those in the back. Keeping a low profile, I managed to go unnoticed when depositing my gains and when sneaking back into the store. After picking the front clean, I entered the back room. If too many Zeds spotted me, 
I'd need to retreat home. So I clung to the walls and shelves while saluting. With nothing left, I returned to the van and headed home. The area nearby was clear, but soon I found myself surrounded and at a real risk of getting trapped, so I took a safer route. More would follow me home this time. Rusty, fought all who approached and sealed myself away. With my loot deposited, I checked my generator. It was far more fuel than expected. My prediction was for it to last a little over three days, but it was set to exceed well over a week without the freezer connected. That wasn't the only good news. My potatoes were ready to harvest. I quickly filled my farming experience to level four and the fridge's freezer to capacity. To maximize gains for the remaining crop, I needed to read the next farming skill book, taking me into the night, the morning, and the afternoon. Rounding out at halfway through level five, I'd eclipsed all other skills in a matter of days and solved any food issues for the near future. Unable to sit idly by, the remainder of the day revolved around maintenance. For my garden, I set about furrowing, sowing, and watering my new potato crop. And for the gen, I repaired its condition with electronic scrap and topped up its fuel. With everything in tip-top shape, I spent the rest of the day working on myself by consuming recipe books and the first volume of first aid before falling asleep. It was time to leave for a hardware store. My next goal was a sledgehammer to break into gun stores. In this city, it was risky to use firearms, but when clustering the undead, it would be an effective tool. Before leaving, I cut away the wear of time again and cleared the entrance for my departure. Despite my purge at the gas station, a recent helicopter and trip through these streets left them barely navigable. Closer to the hardware store, my efforts outside hit vids left the area in stark contrast to before. Using the van's horn, I pulled them out of the woodwork and returned the streets to their natural state. After luring them to the old burn-off pile, I ditched the van outside Zach's and returned to gather them together. Yet another group for me to burn. Spotting a hand axe, I took my shot to get it. But firmly lost to the horde, I set them alight and began moving in circles to engulf them all. horn paid off as my return went uncontested, though my entry into the store would not be. One was still in here. Failing to draw its attention with hushed whispers, I drew closer until it and an unknown number in the back heard me. Before they broke through, I raced to take as much as possible just in case the numbers were overwhelming. One section of the store yielded good loot, but not what I was looking for. After dumping everything into the boot, I lit my torch and approached the storeroom. With the occupants cleared, I could take my pick of everything. If there was a sledgehammer here, I would find it. But there wasn't. My best bet would be to find another hardware store, but that was for another day. Returning under the moonlight, I navigated through the wake of my destruction and the nearby townhouses. Upon my arrival, I met the trailing dead at the entranceway. It was less this time. Safe, I killed the headlights and emptied the boot. I'm a fucking idiot. I am a fucking idiot. I did it again. My loot was still sitting outside the hardware store. 
After some self-contempt, I checked on my garden, noticed my new skills had their benefits. My higher farming skill let me visually see the state of my crops, rather than needing to approach them to inspect them. Nice. I would return to grab my loot another day. I was getting a sledgehammer, but my options were running thin. In all of Louisville, there are four hardware stores. One burnt down, and two had been searched and stripped, so prepared for the journey to the last one. Dead smack in the CBD. I'd avoided venturing deep into the city, but today would be the day. After swapping out my low condition axe, I was off. It would be interesting. And after some familiar landmarks, it would all be new. This deep, the groups were large, the buildings imposing, and I was out of my depth. I'd never seen so many. The large city structures also presented a problem, obscuring the path forward as I struggled to pass the growing groups. But with careful maneuvering and luck, I made it to the street of my destination. Horns would not be an option here, there were just far too many. It took ages for the nearby dead to stop wandering in, for me to clump them together. But I could finally light my Molotov. Where was my lighter? Without a lighter, I had no realistic way of dealing with the horde. Killing them all would be impossible. With every step drawing the attention of multiple dead, losing them all was just as unlikely. I needed to get to the van to escape, but with the following horde thick enough that a run for it would fail, I ventured deeper into the city to lose most of them. It was expectedly horrifying. Soon the entire street was overflowing with the dead, and I was running out of options. For the same reason my base was safe, the fences of the art gallery provided the opportunity I needed. Jumping it to lose them could work. My plan already bore fruit with a hand axe on a zombie. Unfortunately, there was a gate at the back. So the following dead would continue their hunt, yet the delay might be enough for me to lose them. Over the fence, new groups ready on me, desperately reaching for the last meal in the city. But an alleyway and a corner later, their line of sight was broken, and I had some time. Without a driver's seat window, leaving with the dead close could kill me, so I needed to kill them before I could escape. or pull them away. The roads already travelled would be swarmed, but it felt like those untraversed were just as bad. With a general bearing of the east, my movements were subject to the undead whims as I inched my way back. How many were in the buildings? <laughs> he says. After ramming through another group, returned to familiar streets, and eventually home. In frustration at myself, I charged forward to meet the followers. Successive failures require redemption. It's time to get the pile of items outside the hardware store. Having purged the area twice, the contrast from before to now was night and day. 
So much so, I was uncontested when loading up outside the store. Unlike my base, how could I let an area far away be in better standing than my own home? Taking my time, I aim to pull in as many as possible before setting them alight. Running into the night, I struggled to keep the situation under control, the flames engulfing more townhouses and stripping the floor nearby. With the fire dwindling, I equipped the pipe wrench and torch and fought the scraps amongst the ashes. Tired, I could finally return home and rest. The dead were still here. Avoiding the fight, I looped the block and hoped the northern section of the road was clear. Their black silhouettes proved me wrong. I was in for a hell of a fight. The first wave crushed took vitamins and assessed what remained. There were too many. During a prolonged night fight, I retreated inside and slept. Alert and my stomach full, it was time. satisfied, the fight spread into the intersection until the area was mostly free of the dead. How many more were lurking in the shadows? Sealing myself away from the world, I could breathe and deal with small internal matters, like my broccoli being ready to harvest, or digging furrows for the next rainfall. With plenty of the day left, I could remedy my earlier failure. The last hardware store in Louisville remained unlooted potentially had a sledgehammer. It was another hard fought battle through the infested streets to get there. With potentially hundreds lurking at the southern end of the hardware store street, I detoured around the block to get there. Here I found evidence of a hard fought battle, but despite the ashes strewn through the street, the dead's presence appeared unaffected. Now at the store, my earlier efforts paid dividends as I was able to quickly corral the separate groups and throw my Molotov. The horde of flame set about running them in circles within the confines of the parking lot. Looming tiredness presented an issue, but ample vitamins would keep me going. The flames finally snuffed, I could start working on those inside the hardware store. The noise of the fight drew on those from inside and from the neighbouring building, yielding me a motorcycle helmet and a chance to enter the store for loot. After another wave, I could finally search all the shelves. Threatened, I kept my weight down as I skimmed the store for a sledgehammer. But I was unlucky once again. Sledgehammerless, I returned under dusk to the Louisville treatment. Surrounded from a head and behind, I doubled back through a car park to escape. The height of the buildings was beginning to cause problems again, as hidden hordes and even cars risked putting me out of commission. As the light dwindled, so did my hope for returning as I barreled through groups to get by. Pressured by the drawn dead, I ditched the van at the entrance and steeled myself for the coming fight. 
Going for the divide and conquer approach, I pulled a couple into my hand axe and tore. Weighing up my tiredness to the group size, I put faith in the two doors of separation between the horde and my bed again, and chance sleep. Taking my time was imperative, only three or fewer at a time. After finishing the remainder, I cleared the entrance of foliage, brought my van inside. As I worked away in the immediate vicinity, I devised new locations for sledgehammer runs, I thought about my dwindling situation at home. The dead encroached, and eventually, there'd be too many to deal with. My best plan was to construct bottlenecks nearby to restrict the flow of undead from the city, but was that more important than getting a sledgehammer and arming myself? Truth be told, getting guns wasn't important to me. I just put too much effort into the hunt to give up now. My new destination was a collection of warehouses on the outskirts of the CBD. Hopefully, the amount of Zeds would be lower and I could get there without issue. Preparing for the journey, I assessed the condition of my step van and Cerise. A broken hood on the van meant any hit Zeds would damage the engine, so I worked on the station wagon. I removed the passenger side window and placed it on the driver's side for protection, topped it up with gas, and headed off. Tight street and overgrown curbs limited my maneuverability. And soon I was overwhelmed. Oh shit. Notion of retreat instantly squashed. Driving across the street, I used the horn to pull in those from inside and set about navigating and collecting the swarming dead. With the car park too swarmed to burn them off here, I headed down the street to the larger one that serves the warehouse complex. Despite the ever growing threat, I continued to yell, drawing in as many as I could from inside. Eventually, those joining began to wane, and the large group following started to thin. With a smaller group of flame, I led them up the street to collect those near my car. It was risky, but we conserve Molotovs. Safely back, the process repeated into the evening until I finished the remainder. My efforts to clear around my car paid off, but I was stuck with another horde to burn. Except this time, pushed into the night and through tiredness. Late at night, getting darker, another horde would burn through my vitamin supplies, so I sneakily killed to enter the building nearby. Two broken windows, all uncovered, and sleeping out here risked a violent wake up, so I barricaded myself in the bathroom and slept on a dingy office chair. It worked. I went unspotted, now had a whole day to continue clearing and exploring the warehouse complex. The dead lurking inside was a problem, 
the area outside being clear, then a direct approach was unlikely to draw too much attention. The X carry. With one and two shots sending the oncoming groups enough, keep everything under control. After stripping the corpses of electronics and keys, you could start on the nearby crates. No sledgehammer. Gathering what I could, I approached the next warehouse. was a lot more promising. As I methodically worked my way across the stack crates, I found propane torches, wood glue, an assortment of axes, and cabbage seeds. But no sledgehammer. Oh my god, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, I fucking got it. It had taken days, but I finally had it. The means to break into gun stores and arm myself. But what good would it be if I died like a dog in the streets? My trip across the infested streets of Louisville almost cost me my life. And I had to do it again. Approaching from the south was off the cards, so I opted to head further north and approach from the west. The journey was tense as I navigated through tight streets and around those blocking the way. Now due west of my base, I cut right and began my approach. Only to find myself surrounded. Barely escaping intact, it was clear it was only getting worse, so I dipped into a side street named for the north, where recent burn-offs would mean a safer journey. It was a tense drive, but under control, as I passed the ruins of Knox Bank and returned home through the poor condition the once clear streets found themselves in. They would follow me home, but I was ready to meet them. Clearing the area of the dead was my best move, but after an intense week of hunting down a sledgehammer, I needed a break. Diving into the internal issues of my base, the lack of water outside drove me into a neighbouring house to wash myself and my clothes. I needed more or better quality barrels. Hoping to reach level 7 carpentry, I consumed VHS tapes into the night. Hi. I'm Alex, and I'm here with my identical twin brother. Today we're making an apocalypse classic. Boiled chicken and rice with avocado. Bam! Looks good, huh? Welcome to Woodcraft. Today we'll be making a survivalist necessity. A bench so you can rest those weary legs. Comfy. Only gaining two levels from all the woodcraft shows, the upgraded barrels were out of reach, so I settled for capping out at level six and building the lower quality ones before heading to bed. With a new day came purpose. I was well past due for guns, a new car, and getting on top of the declining state of the nearby streets. To this end, I collected my allotment of thawed potatoes, grabbed a sledgehammer and a gas can, and departed. Yelling and snaking, I drew in those in the area and kept them close behind. It was a calm but precarious situation as I inched around the block, each yell turning the following dead into a true horde. Weaving them with even more zombies, I approached the Finnegan Research Building. My shouts stirred a dormant power from within, and soon the horde reached unfathomable numbers and kept growing. The pressure was mounting, but I kept shouting. 
My original plan was to burn off the dead at the junkyard, but the stream from inside never ceased. Instead, I aimed for the neighbouring car park, where the joining dead would provide a consistent fuel. From a single flame, I sealed all their fates, holy. Forming a large circle of charred flesh and final groans. Dragging into the evening, the gun store was now out of my reach, but I could still get more supplies and a car from the nearby bar. Despite my efforts, they contested my return. But failed to stop it. Safely inside, crafted some molotovs and checked my weight. My vegetables weren't sustaining me, leaving me underweight. Fighting against the lack of calories, I sculled a bottle of wine like a goblin and gave in to inebriation. Out of practice, I performed burpees to stretch for the coming day. This time my focus was the gun store by the gas station, but first, my crops were dying from dehydration. With empty barrels, I resorted to my reserves and gave them just enough for the next few days before departing. Wanting a good conditioned car with a big boot, I left on foot and repeated the steps from yesterday. Except this time, I passed by the gun store before leading them to my burn off pile by the gas station. Before setting them alight, I drew in those outside a small mall. I triggered another dormant horde. The large concrete area of the car park allowed me to maneuver safely around the new and aflame dead, but if I left those in the mall alone, they'd bleed into the streets and undo any progress, so I took risks to get closer, letting my yells echo throughout the building at the expense of the grass and fence. Again, again, and again. I drew them out before returning to the car park and setting them aflame. After wiping out what remained, I could now hotwire any of the vehicles in the car park. Even with great boot space, the low engine condition made the purple dash bull driver undesirable, but I found the perfect vehicle for my next task nearby. It was time to tackle the gun store. My fire axe made quick work of any zed or doors in my way, whilst the sledgehammer broke through the chain link security gate. After one final scan, I was in. Rather than grabbing everything, I skimmed the shells to good condition shotguns and shells. At my low level aiming, most guns were unusable, and the ability to hit multiple targets at once would significantly increase my ability to master the aiming skill. With my back breaking to the weight, I returned home and contemplated the best way to utilize my newfound ability to inflict death and draw in the dead. Regardless, I would be ready for it. Using the last water in the bathroom, I washed away the blood and grime in preparation for a new day's addition. Shotgun and shells in hand, my screams went unanswered as I journeyed south. I was alone, but not for long.
made quick work of the first group and chipped away at those drawn in. Quantity of dead frayed my nerves and aim, but beta blockers got it under control as I continued to work away at the horde. Spotting a large backpack, I darted back through the group and took my shot to get it. Driven north by the encroaching dead, I'd return to grab it once I cleared those following. Why was a zombie on fire? One of my nearby fires must have spread, or a zombie escaped, and I was paying the price. Soon my horde was aflame, and the nearby houses were at risk from the arid overgrowth. I could quell the flames, not with water, but with gunfire. Missing a shot, I raced between the husks of townhouses and could only watch as another row caught a light. My low accuracy was also problematic, but I continued to improve. Preserving shells, I dispatched what remained with my hand axe and aimed to prevent another fire from spreading. To this end, I yelled to draw out any dead nearby or inside as the gravel path would prevent the flames from jumping from the buildings. The back was clear, so I returned to the front and continued drawing out the dead. Oh shit. Waiting for the flames to die, I hotwired another car. Topped it up with gas, and checked each of the buildings had their fires extinguished. There was one last thing to do. Grabbing the backpack, I returned to the taxi and ditched it in the entranceway. Spent the remainder of my day listening to the radio, transferring everything to my new backpack, and fighting back against my dwindling weight. It was time to do it all again, except this time, I aimed to clear out some of the dead clustered to the south of my base. Whilst checking for helicopters, I managed to catch the end of the emergency broadcast. It was going to rain, but I had more pressing concerns. Stealthily, I fought my way into a barricaded house. These can contain a plethora of supplies or weapons, The axes and food were worth taking, but not life-changing, or enough of a burden to return home, so I pressed on. My shouts and gunfire had a delayed, but intended effect. Within the confines of the parking lot, I gathered what I could and led them up the street. Eventually, I burned through the shells I had brought with me, and I found myself back by the townhouses intending to use a molotov. Except this time, I'd prevent the flames from spreading further than I wanted them to. The 
Besides one instance, I succeeded in that promise, with the fire failing to take hold. Wrapping up earlier than expected, I collected another car and ditched it outside once again. The entranceway had deteriorated far beyond when I had first successfully sealed the barricade, and I was tired of accommodating it. I quickly emptied my cerise and step van into a large pile in my living room and moved them out. Rather than ditching them far away, I kept them close by for an improvised choke point and source of parts. My level 6 carpentry was too low for high quality water barrels, but I could construct a gate. But that was for tomorrow. The car's headlights provided the vision I needed to cut down the trees and saplings for logs. Exhausted, carried them behind the barricade and ripped the clothing of those decaying in the entranceway. Before starting proper construction, I needed to read the upcoming carpentry volume for the experience modifier so I utilized my necessary brakes. Except this time, I read in the car rather than heading inside. I was stuck and had no idea how to get out. I tried rereading the book, switching seats, began powering through the book before realizing a lone zombie would be the death of me. So I prepared to save and exit. Escape of all things worked. After that near heart attack, I continued working away as if nothing happened. What? With no recent injuries that broke the skin, the queasy modifier was most likely due to my time spent near the rotting corpses. Most likely. So I set about moving the logs, but would read inside in the future. The rain was finally here, and I needed to capitalize on it. Soon my garden was re with a wide array of vegetables. Low calorie, but diverse food supply I could rely on in the future. After reading more and washing myself, I welcomed the next day. With my carpentry book finished, today would be a day of progress. I think you know where this is going. After some indecision on wall placement, I finally settled on aligning it with the original fence. Not a helicopter. But before I could get stuck in, I was interrupted by another helicopter. Even though the entranceway was clear, my work was being undone just out of my view, and I was powerless to stop it. With it gone, and no dead sighted, I harvested the seed-bearing strawberries and returned to work. The next thing on my agenda was a gate. For the materials to build it, I raided my piles of loot and doors for the planks, doorknobs and hinges required. With the remaining log walls following suit, and after readjusting my furniture barricade, the entranceway was finally in a state of strength, rather than on the brink of disarray. Though my cars needed to follow suit. And with some minor touch ups, I'd finished the exterior of my base. My next step was to wrap up the few remaining ends, like my decreasing weight, limited shells, the awoken dead still pouring out of the mall. And I might as well grab another car. God damn it. With a bandage over the deep wound, I delayed proper medical care to instead grab a plethora of high calorie snacks and to continue hotwiring the step van before returning home. Thankfully, my medical cabinet was well stocked as I removed the lodge glass with tweezers, disinfected it, and sutured it shut. The injury would impact my ability to swing weapons, but not my ability to shoot or throw molotovs. As I drove, I consumed lollies before blasting my horn around the mall. Whatever was in there would now find its way to the outside. 
The noise left the area by the gas station crawling with the infected. My shouts quickly gave them a target. The outpour through the front doors prevented proper clustering, so I led what I could away and set them alight. Once again, the open mall car park kept the dead from encircling me as I prepared to fight back. One close call from adjoining stragglers cemented the precariousness of the situation, so I clustered them together before continuing to shout and shoot into the afternoon. Now and then, I drew closer to feed the flames with more corpses, my shotgun with targets. I could continue working on those pulled outside, but I had killed enough. It was well past time for me to secure all the guns and ammo from the gun store. Nothing was left as I stripped displays, lockers, and the back room. All in all, it took me three loads to get everything into the van. Far too much for my already overloaded storage at home. So I grabbed the crates and shelves before leaving. On my return, I continued to eat junk food and noticed my near constant snacking was paying off. For the first time in two months, I was gaining weight. If I kept this up, it wouldn't be long until I lost the underweight trait and regained my strength. With the crates and shelves placed upstairs, I signed each a specific weapon type rifles, pistols, and shotguns, and stored them amongst their corresponding ammo. The attempt to clean my lackluster living quarters spread until multiple facets like literature, skill books, materials, and tools found their way to each other, but I still needed more storage. For this, I raided the nearby shops. Starting at the coffee shop, I looted anything of value before taking the shelves back to the van. For the convenience store, I repeated the same tactic. Except this time I came away with two shelves, a large variety of food and drinks, and some cardboard boxes for overflow. With enough storage solutions and at the expense of my ceramics, every item would find its place. As I worked into the night and the morning of the following day, questions started to plague me. What else could I do to secure my position? My ventures into the CBD had made one thing clear. So long as it stood and remained open to my base, it would never be safe like an infected wound threatening to take the whole body down with it. Maybe my best course was to cut it away. For the first time, my base was in order, and the neighborhood had returned to the state before I locked myself away to improve my stats. But the clock had started until the dead wandered in from the surrounding area through meta events and migration, and doing all my progress. Did it have to be this way? The answer is no. Using knowledge on zombie movement, anyone can create a stranglehold on the CBD, constricting and potentially stopping the flow of undead from those infested streets. To do this, we can use the fact that unloaded zombies, the red dots, are unable to damage structures or furniture, including the ones we've placed. And when they move as groups, the white dots, they can't walk past them either. So if we place furniture between pre-existing choke points and leave the area, no zombie will ever pass through it again, letting us slowly cut away the CBD. Applying this to my situation, I can use the Ohio River as an anchor and divide the area that needs to be blocked into the northern, western, and southern regions. For the north, the long fences and apartment buildings serve as the perfect choke points, giving two distinct areas for me to blockade, leaving only a small wrench in the works the thousands of undead from insane population settings. It might not work, but it was my best plan so far. 
arriving at the Ohio River, it was time to take the first step. As I needed to place the furniture by the buildings, I tried to awaken those dormant within. With the dead roughly clustered, I set them alight. They posed a threat early on, but soon my wide berths became uncontested. I could walk calmly as the horde began to dwindle in numbers. With the situation under control, I took the opportunity to grind my aiming skill. The gunshot reached further than any shout, and my underestimation of their presence became apparent. The buildings being alight wasn't ideal, but as I was far away from anything important, it was okay. I had more relevant issues. Close to their flame buildings, my yells pulled out what dead I could as they and the following dead burned into the evening. The area clear, I grabbed a rattan couch and made the first dent in finally stopping the zombie threat. The day's efforts left my nerves frayed, and the banging in a new apartment complex was too much to deal with. So I left. Cut off from the front, I formed a U-turn before fleeing back the way I came. Closer to home, I enjoyed the fruits of my labour as the groups thinned and I made it back with little resistance. My efforts to gain weight finally resulted in my loss of the underweight trait, and after cleaning my wound, I fell back onto the compound for my answer to blocking the streets. Gathering furniture that didn't produce noise to place, I collected tables, appliances, single-seater couches, TVs, and their stands into the night. Hopefully yesterday's efforts had paid off, and I could afford to take the quiet approach. There were more along the street than last time, but not enough to pose a threat, so I continued my mission. Wanting to keep a low profile, I started clearing the dead. I needed to use another Molotov. Despite all I had burned yesterday, I accrued a sizable following. Why did that not work? Okay. <laughs> Wanting to wrap up quickly, I killed any stragglers wandering in and turned on those already aflame. All gone. Started on the northern section first with next to no difficulties. As I was close to the apartment complex, I decided to grab some furniture from inside to stretch my resources further. Fearing a fight while heavily encumbered, I tried limiting myself to a couple pieces at a time. Like always, I soon broke that rule. The northern section was complete, leaving only the west and south to do. The search for more furniture drove me deeper into the apartment complex, where I found the consequence of my lackadaisical approach to fire. As in a flame zombie followed me out, new fires would have started close by, but the sunset delayed the issue till tomorrow. Unlike yesterday, there was little resistance to my return, though I took great care to not venture too close to the moor with thousands of undead dormant within. After a couple of zombies, safely inside. After filling my van's boot and gas tank, I headed to Black Liquor to stock up on bourbon to the detriment of the dead. The area clear, I went inside, grabbed what I could, and left for the apartments once more. With two days of intense clearing, the scraps didn't stand a chance. So I loaded up on furniture only to be caught out by new arrivals and encroaching fire. The risk to my newly fitted barricades was minimal, if I could move quickly. 
as fire doesn't spread when I'm not in the area. Piece by piece, and dead by dead, I slowly built the wall into the afternoon. Growing exhaustion required me to take a rest before getting back to it. That would be a problem. I tried to stop the dead from colliding with my barricade, but found myself with another horde to burn and my wall aflame, forcing me to watch as my work unraveled before me. In the end, the damage to the furniture was minimal, but the gunshot cost me the day as it was too risky to work under moonlight. The streets nearby were even clearer, but the same couldn't be said for near my base, with the noise of the van leaving a group just outside my walls. Before dealing with the dead, I cleaned myself up and noticed I was losing weight and at risk of becoming underweight again, so I stuffed myself with more junk food before leading the dead away, returning to my car park of ashes and buildings of flames. This time I pulled in what I could from the nearby township and those near my walls to buy more time to wrap up the barricades. The dead were more painful than ever, with each step meaning more damage to the walls I had worked so hard to erect. Aggression and frustration were today's words. As I used indestructible TVs to fortify the southern wall. Are you just aiming for that? I'm here! And reclosed the northern. Having run out of furniture in the van, I resorted to searching amidst the ruins of nearby units to fill in the remaining gaps. My scuffling caught the attention of nearby Zeds. Even with the sun setting, I gathered another horde to burn, aiming to benefit the next gap I intended to block. Only a small distance from some of my most extensive burn-offs, I maintained a steady stream of new undead, dragging the excursion into the night. The 27th commemorated the return of the underweight trait and a chance to assess the damage my absence had left. Preparing intact, I made a quick getaway before any dead could break through and clocked the unfinished area as done. Whilst not perfect, I tightened the noose on the CBD. So long as I stayed away from the barricades, it was permanent. My return was marred by the dead, but after giving them the slip, could finally give in to tiredness. After a hard night, I took the day to focus on myself and my base. Spotting seed-bearing radishes, I harvested them all and took the opportunity to read and watch cooking content, aiming to prepare some high-quality meals. Nothing beats the underweight trait like bear and potato soup, random combination pasta, or potato stir-fry. Even with the high nutrition, the meals still lack calories, so I fell back on my alcohol reserves to make the difference. A foggy day dissuaded any notion of venturing out, so I continued my abuse of alcohol before gathering more furniture, eating, and topping off the day with more exercise and reading. The next phase of my plan was afoot. Both my base and I were ready for it. With the last full gas can emptied, I left for the gap between the fences. With a large ash pile in the car park, I gathered a new horde from the same area and combined them with those from the car dealership and bar. The furniture out the front wasn't the only thing that caught my eye. It also had a high quality water barrel I could take, but only after I emptied my van. So after awakening those in the dealership and setting the following horde alight, I found myself ready to build my barricade. Pulling up close by, dealt with any drawn dead before placing everything. With only a couple of gaps left, I'd finish tomorrow. The trend continued from previous days, as I encountered no zombies on the road I was once forced to retreat out of, but needed to swerve constantly near my home. But if I got caught up with short-term safety, I'd never have long-term security from the dead. So after exercising, Slamming back a couple of bourbons, 
in a drunk sleep, I was back at the black saddle. I had to be strategic with my yelling. Near the building and deeper into the township was okay, but those close to my wall threatened to damage it if I got their attention. Another horde wipe grabbed the water barrel and a table from the front. I usually avoid anything that produces noise, but a few drawn stragglers weren't a threat this early in the day. Oh. Oh no. No. There was no doubt in my mind. If I stayed too long or got stuck, the waves of approaching death would end me and my war. Oh shit. If I unload. If I unloaded the area, it would collide harmlessly with my placed furniture. As I escaped, Every street had dead wandering towards the alarm. I needed to consider the road barricaded for the foreseeable future, so I tried to salvage what I could of the day. Any dent in the northern Zeds would be more meaningful than ever. Their deaths would have another nice bonus, with the nearby liquor store being clear to raid. With my growing dependence on alcohol for calories, I needed anything I could get. I failed to empty the front, let alone the whole building, but the ethanol would fuel me for a while. Feeling good about the day, I downed two bottles before heading home. For some reason, I missed the relationship between drunkenness and tiredness and struggled to make my way home. Wait, does it actually make your driving laggy? Like wait, this is me pressing right. Now. Now. Oh. Aware of the delay? I slowly returned home with minimal scrapes. The increasing tiredness meant a fight was risky, so I snuck inside to drink more. My morning was spent replacing one of my sink barrels with a better version, only to find that with a full barrel, the sink lacked water. Replacing the sink did nothing, but after I took measurements, I realized my error. With no rain forecast, I watered my thirsty plants before exercising and reading the fishing book into the night. I was no longer feeble or underweight, but that didn't mean I'd won my fight against my weight. After finishing fishing, I was ready to grab more gas. Rather than disconnecting my generator and reconnecting it at the gas station, I chose to grab another one from the you store it lot. Going fireless, I used my shotgun into the afternoon. Only to realize the quantity of undead was untenable with only shells. Popping up the scraps from my fire axe, I raided the lock. The third unit needed me a generator. So I left for the gas station encumbered. My uncontested arrival was either due to my earlier gunshots or my effort to clear the nearby mall. Regardless, I was happy to reap the rewards. Before calling it a day, I remembered a fossil oil truck in the mall car park, so I grabbed the cans to gather more fuel. Despite the hour, I was still wide awake, leading me to power through exposure survival and induce sleep myself. Liquor was good for calories, but was limited. I 
and needed something else. So I crafted the wooden box traps I'd seen on TV. Placing them far away and splitting them apart, used worms as bait to catch birds, and only needed to wait to reap my rewards. My next step was to block the intake of dead directly to the west. The western section was open-ended, with the simplest blockade featuring the tallest and most dangerous buildings, the most complex was oppressive but safe. Which one was going to work? It all depended on how far I could make it. Pulling in the dead from the surrounding area, the migratory dead up against the townhouses, and those aflame from the grocery store, I was quickly overwhelmed and needed to force my way through. If this was the stake close to my home, further into the CBD was well written off. Now yelling, I snaked through countless aflame dead to cluster them together and spare the nearby buildings of flames, with the constant heartbeat matching my own growing terror. En masse, the dead started dropping, changing the dynamic of a knife's edge to a bloodbath as corpses and ash piles lined the street. Alongside the buildings, I also lost valuable items. But a clear area was well worth it. As far into the CBD as I was willing to go, began looting TVs from an electronic store to block the alleyways between the stores. I'd chosen how I'd secure the western front. Aiming to scout stores I wanted to loot, I fought, blocked more alleyways, and grabbed better head protection until I was driven home by growing exhaustion. With ample time left in the day, I dumped all the spare TVs from the compound into the van, checked my traps for animals, Oh sweet, I began grinding fitness directly to fix the imbalance in my stats. Despite some ramming yesterday, the van remained in fit condition as I repeated yesterday's tactic. The noise attracted hundreds and left me in a precarious situation, with it only getting worse. What? Why am I hearing that noise? Oh, is that a car alarm? Oh. Oh, shit. Well, that's not good. The swarming dead soon blocked my attempts to maneuver around them, straining me at the back of the shops and forcing me to work in smaller portions. Spotting a gap, I rested to bring them all together before setting them alight. Wait, no way that was a helicopter, right? Fuck it. A helicopter. Zeds from all over would soon be barreling towards me. But I put it best. <laughs> oh shit. Oh shit. <laughs> Oh god, no. Oh god, no. Directly above me now, the noise drew an even more dead, driving me from the following horde and leaving rogue groups alive. The flames soon spread into buildings, including the alcohol store I wanted to loot. Why is there explosion? The relative quiet from the departed helicopter was broken by intermittent explosions as fire and alcohol violently mixed in mead, drink and Bloody Mary, engulfing the neighbouring buildings whilst drawing in more dead. But slowly, I brought the situation under control. Even though the buildings were still aflame, I was determined to use up the day proactively, so I began manually clearing the area to place more TVs. Failing to do this, and under the threat of exhaustion, I opted to pull the dead away to make tomorrow easier before returning home. I repeated the same tactic, but to a quieter tune. 
My brashness with fire resulted in a saved Molotov, more damage to the flame ravaged buildings. But with relatively low numbers compared to the past two days, I didn't struggle to add another layer of bodies and ash to those strewn throughout the street. I'd finally finished the grunt work of the immediate area, so I set off for the funeral home, I mean to continue building the major blockades from the north down. Rinse and repeat. Oh, whoa, 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 shit. After two burn-offs, there was too little time to build my first furniture barricade, so I improved my base's defences and drank to abate my fried nerves. A late wake-up pressured me to wrap up quickly. I drew on those from nearby houses, stores, and a funeral home before repeating an all too familiar process. Under a fading sun, I crushed the scraps and met all those near the gap I intended to block. It was unrealistic to do both large sections without repeating the incidents that occurred up north, so I restricted myself to TVs for the smaller gap. Running out of those in the van, I resorted to looting the nearby townhouses to make up the difference some of which had their windows and doors intact. Rather than returning home and wasting time, I set up in one of those secure homes, netting me a safe house, water to clean myself, high calorie food, and a sleep permeated by banging. Rushing, I blocked the remaining alleyways and looted the only remaining store of interest in the northern block, Box Pop Brewery. Rather than finding the high calorie wine or spirits I craved, I found an idea. The lightweight cardboard boxes would be perfect for barricading. After filling up the boot with the furniture from the recently cleared townhouses, I was ready. The dead approaching my wall threatened to undo my progress so I unloaded the area and began prepping the southern stores for the final leg of the western section. Rain meant it was time to work on my garden, but the allure of alcohol and decorations delayed my return home. My impact on the streets was already noticeable, with next to none left on the approach from the grocery store. But it was still only temporary. As I worked away in the garden, I contemplated the implication of my work. If I succeeded, I'd be free of the undead. But still alone. Is this how I wanted things to go? The 79th day led me to another bear brewery, but this time next to the Ohio River. Inside, I found the cardboard boxes I desired. Those in the loading zone were promptly emptied and loaded, but the echoing moans from deeper in the building culminated in a street fight with what remained of the cutoff dead. Oh. For once, my growing athleticism and strength gave me the power to meet the opposition head on. I was becoming confident. The noise silenced, I looted the remaining boxes from the work floor, totaling 41 in the boot, plenty for the final parts of the western front. Arriving early in turbulent weather, I had signed up for a night fight. Loading up my backpack and carrying extra on my person, I finished the war within an hour. Giving me ample time to raid more houses for TVs and continue placing furniture barricades. Working my way further from my burn offs, I risked incurring the wrath of another horde, so I switched to sneaking. With the southern stores binded, I grabbed the TVs I would never see again, so I needed to keep the area unloaded when I finished the final barricade. Once again, the lightweight cardboard proved quick and easy to place, and I had done it. The western section was complete, combined with the northern, 
I was significantly safer than ever before, with each kill being near permanent. Oh! Fuck. Dumbass, I'm a dumbass, I'm a fucking dumbass. Didn't even need to fight them, why did I do that? Laceration risks zombification. All it would take is time. The injury location wasn't ideal either, as it slowed attacks. But my only priority was to get home and hide behind my walls. To distract from the looming consequences, I focused on mitigating infection of the wound and questioning how it got through my leather jacket. I couldn't let this happen again, so I padded my clothing to improve their stats, but only received minimal gains due to my low tailoring skill. With nothing left to do but wait, I hid behind my walls in an exercise ridden and drunk in stupor over the next few days, waiting for the queasy moodle. But it never came. Instead, I had my confidence shaken and the fear instilled that this could happen again. My only choices were to hide behind my walls or create more protective clothing. But I needed to get better at tailoring, a skill I'd never worked with. To grind, I knew I needed to rip clothes and pad them, so I hunted for clothing stores in the neighborhood. Sammy's yielded little resistance and racks of clothes. I ripped anything I could find before realizing denim and leather would be more useful in tech so I could pad them. Laden with ripped sheets, I came away with most of level one, nowhere near enough for a day's efforts. But I soon found the best source of XP, as padding each item needed me significantly more and could provide strips afterwards. After powering through the next tailoring volume, I left for the next clothing store to gather more denim and leather to work on. And the next one all to repeat the same process until I realized you gain experience when removing the padding, pushing me to level 4 and beyond as I burned through a few days reading the next volume, grinding the skill, ignoring my moodles, and only taking care of the basic needs of my base. Having run out of thread and patience, I called it. A new dousing of rain let me work on my neglected garden, as I harvested potatoes, removed the wilted or rotted plants, began sowing seeds. As the weather deteriorated to a full-blown storm, the rain and wind chilled me to the bone, threatening a cold. So naturally, I washed myself before heading in drenched and frozen. After wasting time hunting down firefighter gear, I thought they gave a hundred. I did my best to create the strongest armor possible with leather strips on the arms, and improved padding everywhere else before heading to sleep. With fortified clothing, I was ready to get back out there. My furniture barricade now spanned from the Ohio River to the Shady Oaks Retirement Village. All that was left to do was the southern section, but I needed to pass the walls of undead accrued along the way, or wipe them from the map. Heading off on foot, I aimed to do just that. Before I could even reach the street, I was stopped short and made to begin working on the other side of the fence. Given the tight space, I led the dead away to a collection of houses I didn't care about, and separated by roads from those I did. Shotgun blasts rang loud as I drew in what I could and burned the drawn dead to ash and collateral buildings to ruins. Waiting for the flames to extinguish, I killed rogue stragglers and found a new weapon. was too precious to use here, so I tucked it away and continued my mission. Except now, I could reach and navigate through the street whilst attracting and clustering all those I intended to kill. It was more than I could have imagined. Far more than I was prepped for. Yet being on my feet gave me a distinct advantage as I methodically snaked in front of the dead, pulling countless, delaying those close, and giving those further away enough time to catch up.
the street would be clear. In the end, the road lay in ruins, but I had restored a small semblance of peace to the area. Given the time, lack of car, and dozens of dead still remaining, returning home was infeasible, so I found myself in another random building, tucked away while waiting for the night and banging to end. Awoken by a zombie banging into a door, I tried silencing the noise so I could continue sleeping. I lacked the tiredness to do so. With the sun rising, I got back to it. Now facing too many, I repeated a process I'd done more times than I could count. Calm walking, intense yelling, and countless aflame dead. Except this was my last Molotov. I hadn't planned to be out here this long. The flames drew too close to the market. Very avoidable, but within the range of error I was accustomed to. The search for more bourbon led me to the nearby townhouses, where I found high calorie food and a magazine for working on commercial vehicles. No bourbon. Without the ability to clear larger groups, I needed to get home. That didn't mean I had to get back on foot. With less dead clogging the street, I could now make wider berths around the dead, clustering them tighter and keeping as many as possible following close behind. After wiping out the scraps of the burner, I fought by hand through the remaining dead and secured a forward operating base. From here I could extend my wall to split Louisville in two. But how many dead actually came from the southern approach to my base? With the long fence and sparser population, perhaps this was enough. I'd reigned in my ambition successfully gutted the long-term zombie threat. From here on out, while operating within my fortifications, every kill could be treated as permanent. Travelling on foot, I set off to clear the nearby streets by hand. This close to the western front, next to no zombies met my approach. But I soon found what I was looking for. Heading into a new area, I preemptively scouted in my car and accidentally awoke a dormant horde within one of the multi-story apartment complexes. Unchecked, dead would slowly leak out when I was nearby so I decided to return tomorrow with a plan formulated overnight. The sound of my horn would completely cover the thin building, throwing out all inside into the street where I could gather and burn them safely. After the first roundup, Scores followed me to the old burn-off pile by the bank, ready to join their brethren. And again. With the road clear, I drove until I spotted a rogue Z. It really did it again. Somehow, over the dozens of times I'd passed it, 
This was the first time I'd logged in. I was out of Molotov. No, that's dumb. Don't do that. With my tar swarm, I needed to improvise. The back room of the liquor store to the north was unlooted. Molotovs in hand, I returned by weaving the following dead with those drawn in by a car alarm and those still pouring out from the building. Another day, another horde burn. And another. Except at the end of their lives, the stream had finally stopped. I could make my way inside. Emboldened by the empty hallway, I picked a fight, manually clearing what my horn failed to pull out. Late in the day, I called it. Heading to the northwest, I picked up clearing the streets behind my fortifications. And after checking on the awakened buildings, I started to have hope. It almost ended the zombie threat. In fact, there was so little dead left I could safely run through the streets without any contesting me, letting me grab a high quality van, an assortment of TVs for future barricading, and letting me arrive at the destination of my greatest challenge yet. Grand Ohio Mall. Unlike other dormant buildings, the mall was unique in the sheer quantity I expected to find inside. They hadn't noticed me yet, but they all will. To draw out as many as possible, I drove along the two southern entrances of the mall, honking the horn constantly. Eventually, the undead blocked my path, forcing me to continue gathering them on foot. I was experienced clustering the shambling dead, but nothing close to this. By the end of the first wave, I had littered the car park with corpses. But with too little time left in the day for another round, I returned home in the rain and lay witness to an omen. Is it snowing? No way.
suppose that's not good. The first snowfall had come. I had all the resources I could want for winter, and the ability to get more. But if the dead were allowed to pour out of the mall, I'd lose all the freedom I'd fought so hard to get. So I honked outside the entrances again, more determined than ever. The lack of light against the background of corpses and ash made discerning the moving shadows strenuous, but still doable as I gathered a new horde to burn. quantity of dead had waned, and on that note, I tackled the northeast entrance next. Slip of a suit. Bye, Spiffo suit. Warp survive. Running out of daylight and patience for those within. I looted the boots of the nearby police cars before heading home. With shotgun ammo from the cops, my new plan was to use it within the building to pull those too far from my horn. But first, I needed to kill those at the entrance. I was in. Near the edge of how far the noise of the horn or gunshots had carried, I began clearing the area. But needed to retreat when reloading as the funnel did prove faster than I could kill them. Now apparent my shotgun wasn't enough, I gathered the drawn dead into another clump and set them alight. Weirdly, the flames seemed to linger on the concrete pad. Rather than trying to wipe them out, I snaked through the food court, ensuring I dragged out as many as possible. fire was still going. Worse yet, it spread, changing a run-of-the-mill burn-off into a precarious situation as I tried to stop the dead carrying the flames closer, but watch them all catch a light anyways. This is like concrete. Why is it all burning? Something wasn't right, but I had to deal with it. With the dead gone, I liked the water to extinguish the flames so I unloaded the area to stop the fire from spreading, pausing my attempt to clear the mall until the next rainfall. With time to kill, I did general maintenance on the base. Really? Grabbed a gruntier car 
and set about towing or pushing vehicles off of the road. I also took the opportunity to traverse streets I hadn't been on in a long time, protecting my main routes from those who would approach. In the relative calm, I took a pause to reflect. I killed thousands of undead with my hands, and countless more with fire. What was I going to do once I finally secured the neighborhood? With rainfall, the question was left unanswered. I still had a mall to clear, The rain made quick work of the fire, so I continued pressing forward. Eventually, I found myself to the north of the building using my axe to kill stragglers. It wasn't fast enough, so I left for the last entrance of the mall, the northwest. Another entranceway was ruined, but this one still had plenty of fight. I was getting exhausted, necessitating a retreat home and a rethink of my approach to the leftover dead. M9 pistol in hand, I left for the mall through the dark, rain and fog. High capacity for ammo with my higher aiming skill let me match the dead pulled outside and carried me further in. Excluding an ammo reloading break, I didn't stop my assault on the scraps left in the building. With no dead left in sight, I entered the gun store, grabbing scarves for neck protection, gun mods, and more shotgun shells, all with the purpose of a future fight I would not find here. On my way home, I scouted the outside of the mall for any surviving dead, made sure to stop any stragglers I encountered. helicopter. Should be scared, should be panicking, but what threat was left? Making my way to the intersection, I waited for a large horde to come, anything to put my existence into question, but nothing came. Then and there, something dawned on me. With my vast stores of food and water, a large and well-fortified base, near infinite fuel from the gas stations within my walls, and the end of the zombie threat. I had done it. I had finally conquered the insanely infested streets of Louisville. And I was done. Before I call it, I wanted to say thank you. This series has been a constant and a very tumultuous year. It has always been something I look forward to coming back to. In part because I really like making videos, but also the encouragement, critique, and ideas from all of you. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, and I'll see you in the next one.